When I visited one of the best universities called Tel University of Tegruni, and when they asked what is the difference between whatever you do and what we do in Africa, and the vice chancellor in that university told me that at this Tegrunian University, what we do is that we are more interested in practical skills such that all the students stay doing practical 90% and 10% in the audience. And when they come out, that is why when you find Chinese constructing our rules and doing other things, you can't be able to distinguish between the Chinese engineer and the apprentice, what to call because at the end, I'm going to Hong Kong. Hong Kong because he has been trained to do that, not to manage. And clearly, that is what we ought to think about. Countries and universities have now commenced some benchmarking programs. All is not lost. We can't keep on complaining because if we keep on saying that we are not doing it right, then we are going to do it right. And I want efforts in our universities to do uh, to do a lot of practical training. And we want to see even in different institutions. The area of specialization. We know TVs are doing everything. And sometimes there's a need to do everything. But what I would encourage as we move forward, we want to see TVs, different institutions doing some area of specialization. We want to see if I want if I want an electrical apprentice or an uh, electrical technologist, I want to hear that this particular event institution in the future is specializing in this particular area and that. I know resources are not there, but you can still do others, but you can see in my institutions, in my institution, is the principle of development. I am specialized in this area. And that does not stop me from also looking at other, other areas. But today, all institutions are institutions. I remember sometimes back when we were training, when we were being trained as teachers, I was Kenya science teachers, college, and they used to be known for producing very good science teachers. They could see and hear the same and so on and so on. We have to ask ourselves when did the rain be with us so that we can be able to go back again and to the drawing board and start doing things right here. I want to go to Mount Kenya University where I am and I want to say that after realizing all this, I say, let us not approach it bravely and say that we are not doing this. And I ask my team, which is headed by Professor something that is very close to my heart, called Graduate Enterprise Academy here, which is encompassed with the responsibility of we have trained about 25 graduates. They might look few, but they are not few. 25. And I keep on saying that if you can get a good one entrepreneur and create thousands of jobs, then certainly you are you can be able to create jobs to others. <clears throat> and uh, we are still going on with that. And I want to really say that. We have invested and we are investing about 10 shillings, 40 million shillings in the next three years in order to address this problem of unemployment. And I want to say it is to entrepreneurship in Africa because there are a lot of resources that are not exploited. Because even when you train the different guys <coughs> and tell them to go and look for jobs, where are they going to look for jobs? They are not there. And I keep on saying, like myself, at one time I was looking for the best job. And I wrote about 5,000 applications looking for a good job. Sometimes I still, even today, I still receive big rates. <laughs> Somebody goes and finds this apply, let me write a big rate to this person. The jobs are not there. It is upon us to give it there. The jobs. And I'm saying that through this model, which I have started, MKU, called Graduate Enterprise Academy, its role is to spark the young people to think about being job creators, not job seekers.
And we are saying, let's not just keep quiet. Let's not keep quiet and wait for miracles to happen because they will not happen. And we are not doing this alone. Many other people have come in, looked at what we are doing, and we have teamed up with what we are calling the best also, the best individuals who are interested in uh, supporting this particular initiative. And just to name a few, we have Makere, University Business School, uh, we have a professor emeritus from the University of Edinburgh, uh, Lufana University of Germany, Leipzig University Germany, International University of Management and Media, uh, Old Lane CF University, and many others, including one of the renowned Kenyan young workers, uh, Dr. Manu Sadari, who is also supporting us to be able to convert entrepreneurs in order to achieve. Uh, their vision. We use a model of three week and boot camps and visual incubation in between the weekends. It's not a full time and, and we are doing this in order to spark those who want to start jobs learn from us. How do we start business? Because when I tell people that when I was starting Mount Kenya University, which is now worth billions of Kenya shares, I started it with about 20,000 shares. People tell me that you must be in a book of people who have looked at this country without uh, being known. This is not true. <laughs> this is not true. I'm not limited. I'm not in any book uh, where I look at the country at all. We keep on saying that if you have a dream, if you have a person, you can be able to achieve what you, what you want. And you don't have to take anybody's money. What you need to do is to follow in that. We need to see passion, and we need to encourage our young people, we need to mold them, we need sometimes to preach to them, telling them that we can be able to make it. You don't have to steal, you don't have to get it to fall in the books of the people who are who teach the resources uh, in this country. Because, you know, even when I'm at the rural electrification authority, every time uh, when people come to look for posts to supply, they tell me here, Chairman, there is a deal of 200,000 and I will give you 10,000. I say, it is me to give you that, not you to give me. You supply the post to me, we need because from there they will tell me, we give the chairman 10,000, so now we post, we will now supply more posts. <laughs> because we give the chairman 10,000. We say that is not the way to go, and that is why we have been able to accomplish the project of electrification of the primary school uh, project in the country. So what we are trying to do in this and in what we are you when you are training these young people, it is good to tell them the obvious and the truth. That there are no jobs out, out there. That is the truth. Sometimes as a country we have to be bold and say what others are not saying. That there are no jobs out, they are go out and create them. Jobs. As I am saying about it myself, after I was, uh, before I was sacked, I was looking for every time throughout. Sometimes I was even uh, unable to mark in class writing applications to get the best job. job. I was somehow, I told myself, the best job will come from my, myself. And now I can say I'm the chairman. <laughs> I don't know whether I was looking for the director's position. But I found myself, I myself in the chair, the chair. But what I'm saying is that it is possible, we have to encourage our young people, we have to tell our people the truth that there are no jobs out there and we have to move out of our way. Even the people who have, like ourselves, we have to do something like what I am doing here. I will say 40 million, million shares is not any other money to give to them people, but we have to encourage our rich people to come in and say, support these projects. If you are in a technical training institute, look for people who can be able to come and incubate young people with entrepreneurship skills. And that is the only way we will be able to develop our country. I want to say that my soul dream will be able to achieve the sustainable development goals was 2015 if we are committed in supporting our 
and people in development of entrepreneurship skills. And it is not easy, and it can be done, and it is upon us, we leaders, to go ahead and encourage our young people to think about exploiting their potential. Sometimes I say, I'm summarizing, I tell young people, don't accept it by potential. Don't die with your potential. Try to do that potential, and the only way you can be able to do that is by the development of entrepreneurship skills. And we are not just say that in class we are teaching entrepreneurship. Theoretical entrepreneurship. Let us try to ask ourselves how do we make sure that the entrepreneurship we are teaching in schools is practical. At the end of the day, you train and mark. Uh, like the way you, you mark our theoretical classes. Let us worship. We are training our young people with practical. Let us bring in people who have got the experience in entrepreneurship, students, and that way we will be able to spark their entrepreneurship skills to the best of I want to stop at that and thank you for listening to me. Very well to introduce the next speaker. In my place, he's actually Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me, Emma in particular. I'm delighted to be here in the presence of the esteemed professors uh, from universities across the continent and uh, to be amongst entrepreneurs. Um, it's an absolute delight to come from down south all the way up. Um, we're delighted, and I speak on behalf of my colleagues from South Africa, that seven vice chancellors of the University of Technology send their greetings, who could not be here for a variety of reasons, but send their greetings to all of you. And we are looking forward to a great partnership with you in the future. At the end of my presentation, I have a little invitation for you directly from them, and I'm going to show you this video. I hope uh, that you allow me that. So that you know where you're going to come to in October at the end of this year. Um, the speaker before me actually did my speech, so I thought I could just leave because I'm still saying the same thing he said. Uh, but being an entrepreneur, I'm sure he uh, knew all these things from experience. I'm actually a criminologist by profession, but I didn't have an apprenticeship. And I didn't train any entrepreneurs in crime. So I didn't do a very good job. So I ended up in higher education doing something else and then managing the higher education sector. I am the CEO of the University's Vice Chancellor's Association of the Universities of Technology. It's a new dispensation that we have in South Africa. We have 25 universities, two brand new universities, one Vice Chancellor this year with us. We'd like to have a with us as our team, Professor Mike Kiso, who gets up this new university. And then we have seven universities, six universities of technology. Universities of technology developed from, originally from uh, kind of Tibet colleges. But our government has been pretty proactive with regard to uh, Tibet colleges and just recently promulgated uh, the white paper on um, post-school education. And the TTEC sector now falls within the higher education sector. And that's a big challenge for us. How do we articulate these qualifications from the TTEC sector into the higher education sector? How do we get our students not only to become artisans and entrepreneurs, but how to ensure that they become high-level innovators? And that's what Africa needs. And that's what hearing over the past few hours today, that we need innovators, that we must stop buying things made in China, made in India, made in Indonesia, made in Korea, but made in Africa. And I'm convinced that we can do it, provided we do the right thing. And in my study, why we fail to create entrepreneurs, the question I ask myself, is, is higher education the weak link? And it appears that we are the weakest link. And we 
then the weakest link for a variety of reasons. And I'm not going to go through the reasons because lots of it you heard earlier in the day. All the statistics show that we have a large percentage of young people in the country without jobs. Many of them are graduates, especially in South Africa between the ages of 15 and 24. We have graduates walking the streets looking for jobs. The same. They've not been trained. They've not been trained in developing and creating their own businesses. There's a great deal of fear around creating businesses. I have children. I can't take this chance. I can't use the money that I have to put into a business and lose that money. And also, they don't have the skills to be able to, be able to create this because our education system does not train them. And that's the biggest addition we in higher education have to make. And until and unless we accept and we make that ambition, we are not going to go forward. So I think universities have to reinvent themselves. I think we've become so obsessed with what our colonial bosses taught us about what is a university that we still see ourselves in that kind of era rather than changing that and doing things differently. Instead, we want to continue to do the same thing in the same way and hope to God that something will change. Nothing will change in higher education. The catalyst for change. We are the catalyst for change. And if we don't change what we teach, how we teach, and the context our curriculum, there is no way we're going to make a change to what is happening in the country, in, on the continent in particular. And the reason that is going to happen as well is we, as in higher education, tend to be elitists. We exclude people. We exclude the business world because we think we know more than them. They make money, they, don't, they can't tell us what we should do. We exclude rural communities because we don't believe they can contribute to what we teach. And we know that this has been the cradle of mathematics. And yet, we sell what we have to others. They take what we have and develop it into something that they sell back to us. In South Africa, you know, we have great diamond mines. We mine it. Someone else takes it, cuts it and sells it back to us. We have wonderful sun in this country, but we get someone else to do solar panels for us. Right. Produces, and Africa on the continent, continent produces waste from electronic goods, you know, the new e-waste. We all love these computers and laptops. We don't know how toxic it is. We don't know what to do with it. When it's done, we want the new one, the latest cell phone, etc. What happens to that old one? Who dismantles it? How do we recycle it? What innovations are there that are happening? And so we, we do not create this entrepreneurial spirit. And what we need to create is what I call an ecosystem. Yes, it's fine for us to um, say that universities must teach this. They need to know this. They need to change their curriculum. And businesses need to absorb our, the people we teach. Yes, we in the business are creating a product called a student or a graduate. That's what we do. That's our product. Who buys it? Industry. Does industry pay us for it? No. Does industry give us something back? No. And whose fault is that? I'm going to say to you, it's higher education's fault. Because we don't engage them. We don't call them to our institutions. We don't believe they can teach us anything at all. And so there are several questions that plagued me during my time 